his position on what seemed to have been the communication he says he's seen in the public domain and also in the media space that was signed by the executive secretary of the president or to the president, Anasanti Bedieto, uh, indicating a directive to Parliament not to send, or he said, a, uh, the Parliament of Ghana in a bad light, and also created a situation where the president was not respecting the orders of the constitution within the structures of the spirit and letter of its separation of powers rules. And that said, let me just introduce our guest for the morning. I have um, a former contestant to become the national women's organizer for the MPP right here, Elena Madekum. Um, is a regular on the show. Good morning to you, Ellen. Hi, good morning. Looking very beautiful in red. Thank you. Yeah, lovely Thursday <laughs> to you. And also ne seated next to her, former general secretary to the CPP, and then currently executive director for Koseka, uh, Nanaya Achimpim Jantwa, a daughter of Kumasi, Alpha Santi. How yes. are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm sure you. after here you'll be going to... Jerry Kwawa. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't play with it. Yes, I'm I agree know. to Jerry Kwawa. Welcome. Thank you. And then the parliamentary candidate for Isikado Kitang, and that's in the western region, uh, the capital of Takrade itself, um, is a mainstay for Isikado Kitang. And uh, I have Dr. Grace. Professor. I, oh, Professor. Professor sorry. Yes, thank um, you. I, I've, I've reduced, I've reduced <laughs> your. Uh, Professor. Sorry. Uh, Professor. Grace Ayensu Dankwa, and uh, good morning to you, and thank you for joining us. Good Looking morning, lovely in, in red as well. Thank I, you. I think the... that was telepathy. I'm yes. not too sure you called each other. It was... No, we I, didn't. I didn't know. You guys didn't do a flyer today, so I had no idea. Yeah, we had intended to do the flyer, but uh, we, you know, we got the discussion topics uh, a bit uh, mixed up late, so we decided to settle on this. But thank you for coming all the You're same. Welcome. Thank you for having us. All right, so let's preface the discussion first with that insert from the Speaker of Parliament, Abang Bagbe, and then we'll follow up with Afenyo Markin, the Majority Leader. That as it may, honorable members, I also bring to your attention the receipt of a process from the court titled Robson Nelson Eche K. Dafiamapo versus, versus the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General, suit number J1 slash 12 slash 2024 which process was served on the 19th, that is yesterday, March 2024, and an injunction motion on notice seeking to restrain the speaker from proceeding with the vetting and approval of the names of the persons submitted by His Excellency the President until the provisions of the Constitution are satisfied. In the light of this process, the House is unable to continue to consider the nominations of His Excellency the President to use the language of the Attorney General and Minister for Justice, quote, in the spirit of upholding the rule of law. Unquote. Until, until after the determination of the application for interlocutory injunction by the Supreme Court. Honorable members, this is the precedent that is being set by His Excellency the President for all Ghanaians to follow. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker went beyond expressing this, this, this agreement 
and rather pronounced judgment on what in his view was wrong. Mr. Speaker did not only stop there, he also used very unsavory words to describe Mr. President. We believe that in a democracy, we have a right to disagree on views expressed, but we do not have right to say things to denigrate another. This, we think, is very unacceptable. Now, let me go to get into the main issue. Mr. Speaker said that Mr. President was undermining democracy and that he should have resorted to the Constitution in making certain communications to the House. We in the majority beg to disagree on the position taken by him. He said he was not going into the matter as that would undermine the outcome of same. But we all know that the very issue that was raised by Honorable Dafir Mepo had to do with the continuing ministers who had been reshuffled to other ministries. The issue of constitutionality of certain nominees had been determined by way of they going through the vetting process, a report coming before the House for debate and final decision. And that's up when you're marking there. But uh, Ellen, what do you make of this? This very standoff between the Speaker on one side of Parliament and then also the President over <laughs> the LGBTQ bill. Well, good morning to our viewers and uh, good morning to my co panelist. Before I go into that, let mm. me say a very big welcome to. I have a goddaughter. Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, on Saturday, uh, my brother of mine named his daughter after, after you. Yes. So. This is the first daughter, hey, daughter I have. And she's called Ya. And oh, yeah. Today and being, you are Ya too? No, I'm Mama. Okay. But today being Thursday, I would like to say welcome to, she's Ya um, Ufusuya Deku Edusei. So Ya, yeah, welcome to the family. And I'm praying for God's blessings on you. Uh, yeah, I also named, uh, it looks like you and Auntie Nanaya <laughs> share the same day. So be great like the women in your life. Yeah, it's about the... Um, Speaker and the president, <laughs> they seem to have an ongoing, I don't know how to call it, relationship. Let me use it that way. This is not the first time that they are, they are at it. And I, when I say they are at it, let me say more of the speaker telling the president, in quote, his mind. Mm. There's nothing wrong with it. That's mm. why we are in a democracy. Everybody's allowed to say what they think and what they think uh, is wrong or what is right. Mm. What I, I find a bit interesting is how all of a sudden the Supreme Court is now going to be the arbiter between um, Parliament and the executive. Uh, and everybody seems to be okay with it. There was a time when the Supreme Court was supposed to be the arbiter and uh, the minority or the speaker was not too happy with the situation. If you remember the issue with the E-Levy, and then um, there was another issue that the Supreme Court had to decide on. I've forgotten exactly what it was. But since the president is saying that the LGBTQ WXYZ bill, is that the name of the bill anyway? Yeah, it's uh, the proper family. The family Perhaps we should start using mm, the, the right name okay. of the bill. Because when you mention the LGBTQ bill, it looks as if the bill is totally against um, LGBT. LGBTQ. Q mm. people, I and we are, we are going to imprison them. But after reading the bill, I really don't think that is it. So we should use the actual name for the mm. bill. So the family, proper family relations mm. bill. Proper human okay. sexual rights and family values bill. Yes. So, I mean, uh, so now the, the tiff is whether it should be submitted to the presidency or it shouldn't be. Isn't that what Okay, what so it's, they've gone through the processes in Parliament. So Good. they are supposed to submit it to the president. Mm -hmm. And then he will make a determination or a decision whether to assent it or not. And the president and feels that because some people have taken issues with it to court, we should wait for the court to finish. Yes. I don't think that is wrong. Then the speaker too says that just yesterday he also received a writ from the court hmm. against the, is it the, the, nominees. the nominee. nominee. So he too wants to wait hmm. for the Supreme Court to determine that case. There's also nothing wrong with it. So they should all wait. 
and let the Supreme Court <laughs> decide each of the cases, and then we move on. Honestly, I just think that this is a storm in a teacup, honestly. Because we all know that the Supreme Court would have to determine on all these issues. Otherwise, you cannot move on it. So let's all wait and let the Supreme Court decide. Whether it is the issue on the ministers or it is the issue on the bill, mm. let us all wait. And the Supreme Court will be up and doing, and I'm sure they'll decide on it. And when they decide, both of them would move and then they would do what they are supposed to do. Honestly, I, I honestly, honestly think that. We have more important <coughs> things to discuss. And uh, this family bill, or whatever it is, is taking too much of our time. We have an elections to run. We have a country to run. And honestly, what people decide to do in their private spaces, I don't think that should occupy our, our, our matter. Mm. So if both of them say that it is in court, so they are waiting, let us wait. Let the courts determine it. But, uh, well, Prof, we're here because the executive secretary, as directed by the president, wrote that uh, letter. I mean, if you look at the tone of the letter, it seems to be giving a certain directive to Parliament not to bring a properly approved bill by the people's representative to the president, for which we go by this constitution. It should just be a matter of procedure. Thank you so much. And before I start, I would also like to say thank you to my constituents in Eskadukit and constituency. Um, things are going well, and I'm excited, and I'm really grateful to the people. Um, the letter from the executive secretary, I call it the cease and desist letter. The cease uh, and desist letter. That is what he said. He called, he asked them to cease and desist from, uh, or some, from presenting the letter to the presidency. And I find it, um, I think it's a, one of the darkest moments in the history of, in our democracy. Um, it's the lowest point in our, our country and it's a threat to the parliament, an attempt to silence the parliamentarians, I mean the members of parliament and the speaker. How so? Um, how can the executive secretary of the president write a cease and desist letter when we have a, con a constitution? The constitution couldn't have been more clear as to how this process is done. Mm. It's a very simple process. This is a bill that was passed by partisan. There was nobody even on the minorities, a majority side that even opposed to that bill. The minority leader op uh, approved it. Majority leader approved it. Mm. Bipartisan bill. They have, this bill has been around for a long time. So they have debated. They have gone back and for forth. For three years. For actually. three years, they have built consensus. They have put the document together. All they are doing is presenting it to you. The law, the, consti the constitution tells us clearly what it has to do. The clerk of the parliament has gone through all their processes and the letter is just being presented to you. The Constitution says, I think it's 106, 6, 7, 8, and 9, and 10, says that if this document gets to you, you have to receive it, and you have seven days to decide whether you want to assent to the law or you refuse to assent to the law. If you, even if you refuse to assent to the law, you still have another option of presenting that document to the, your Council of Elders for maybe more advice. Council of State. Uh, Council of State, sorry, for more advice. True. So what is the issue here? Just the presentation of the document, the president is refusing. Has he read the constitution or is he a Ghanaian? Or he's, is he a president a lawyer, of Ghana? Actually. Some of his cases are used as case law in, in various faculties in Ghana. That is what even makes this case too sad. Because as a lawyer who was, uh, what, whatever, who was sold to us as a human rights constitutional lawyer, what he's doing is completely unconstitutional. It cannot be. The Constitution is not even ambiguous when you read. Even those of us who are non-lawyers, we can read it and we get it and there's no ambiguity. So what is the problem? Accept the document. You either assent to it. You have seven days to either assent to it, refuse to assent to it, or ask for more advisory, advisory of the bill. What is the issue here? He's not even receiving the document. This matter is not about the bill itself. And it's not about what is involved in the bill. This matter is about the president not being, being unconstitutional. That is what this matter is about. Now, Professor uh, Ainsworth, if we take a, a look at the executive secretary's letter, for which the Speaker of Parliament says has not formally been presented um, to uh, Parliament uh, through the clerks, 
There's every indication in that letter that the president has, based on even his own earlier um, comments, that there are cases before the court. And as a result of that, those would have to be decided by the Supreme Court before he will make a decision on whether to assent or not. And so once the bill hasn't traveled from parliament to his desk yet, I'm thinking the president is saying, hold on, when the matters are decided, then you transmit the bill to me. There is nothing in the Constitution that says, hold on, when the matter is decided. The Constitution is clear. It's unambiguous. It binds all of us in Ghana, including the president. The president is not above the law. His executive secretary is not above the law. The law is clear. You accept transmission of the bill. You, either have, you have seven days to either assent to it or you have seven days to refuse to assent to it. Which part of this thing is, has to wait, talked about waiting for an injunction on the bill? There's nothing like that. In any case, E-Levy was passed when there were injunctions on it. So it looks as if the president is being very selective. When the law, what, when he likes what is happening, or when the law appeals to him, then he will sign it even though there's an injunction. When the thing doesn't fit his purposes, then he comes up with something that is unconstitutional. What the president is doing is unconscionable. It is an affront to our democracy. He needs to know what the constitution says. Maybe we need to ask him and his executive secretary to go back and read the constitution. Mm. I am not a lawyer, and I even have read that section of the constitution, and it is so clear and unambiguous. There is no if, ands, or buts. There is no issue. Accept the transmission. You have seven days to either assent or uh, oh, not afraid. assent. That means you're refusing it. Or you can ask for more consultation from your um, council of elders or what, what is it called? State. <laughs> council of state. Yeah. So what, is the, what are we talking about? So the speaker is completely right. And apparently this is not even the first time the president is trying to do that. He is very selective when it comes to our constitution, but the constitution binds all Ghanaians, whether you are the president or you are the president's secretary or you are the speaker of parliament. So what the president is doing is setting a very bad precedent. So if you take a look at that part of the law in 106, the, that constitutional article, uh, 1067 says, mm -hmm. where a bill passed by parliament is presented to the president for us, and he shall signify within seven days after presentation to the speaker that he assents to the bill or he refuses to assent to the bill. Now, the speaker is saying that this is just a matter of course. And so you just have to receive and go according to what the dictates of 1067 is indicating. Now, the concern from the majority side of the house, led by Apenyo Makin. Uh, Apenyo Makin leads the majority. I understand it, but we will talk about it. All right. Because they are divided equally with one independent. <laughs> well, so how did they that is true. And and when you but go, but when as a majority you, side. No, but when you go to EC, the, the, what is written there is... Well, we're not talking about the party. When, when we're talking about the parties, then that, that, that is well, the majority we all know. Side now. So at the end of the day, the Speaker of Parliament, if you take a look at... Um, so some of the things he read seem to be suggesting that the, the president um, was breaching the constitution and not trying to create a certain unity within the organs of government of Ghana. That, that, that's too harsh. Somebody will say, why, why is it too harsh? Oh, Roland, I beg you, good morning. Good morning. Good morning to your viewers. Good morning to my sisters. Uh, they are looking very beautiful this morning. Um, good morning to Prof and Mama. <laughs> and good morning to everybody out there. Good morning to Ghanaians. Hmm. The president is just troublesome. What? He is troublesome. The trouble? Yes. <laughs> the troublesome president? Yes. The president is troublesome. He always wants to create some for I mean, simple things, he makes them complicated. Really? But, yes, of course. Somebody should tell him. Nobody is telling I'm telling him. The president of the land is troublesome? Yes, he is. 
Yes. And instead of us telling him that what he did was wrong, we, we find his own people trying to defend it. What he did was totally wrong, and whatever his honorable, um, right honorable Bagbin is saying is true. What, what, what is this? How can you write such a letter mm -hmm. to, parliament. to parliament? There are three arms of government. They are supposed to be very independent of each other, but they work together as a team. Why do you write that letter? As the Constitution says, 1067, if you don't want to assent to it, you just write back one or two sentences that, oh, because the matter is in court, I believe that we should hold on till the court determines. Period. Nice, beautiful language. Then you send it. Because the, the president knows that back being two will not be quiet. He will reply him. The president is away. They are co-equal. You get me? Back being is a lawyer. He's been in parliament. He was the president's colleague in parliament. He's That's experienced true. everything. And he, the president knows for a fact that he, that letter would not go free. You see, what even hurts me is that now it is affecting people who are not part of it. The ministers who have been nominated. Mm. Immediately I saw that letter. I said, this is going to affect the nominees. Because back being too will hit back. And unfortunately, somebody too sent it to court that he's putting an injunction on the nomination of the ministers. So that is like equalization. What is this? The president ought to have known better that you don't write such a letter. Um, even you can talk. I believe he has a number of um, backbone. Certainly he has. There, there should be an informal way of getting to... Of without communicating. It, yes, without us even knowing what has gone on. This show of metal and power it is not the right thing. That is not the way we should go. Because if you set a certain precedence, and at the end of the day, somebody too comes to do the same thing, then we start talking about it, equalizing, oh, but um, His Excellency uh, uh, um, Nanado did the same thing, so the other person too can do. No. I think that this thing should stop at a point. The president might have executive power in the Constitution. Yes, of course he has. But that doesn't mean that you overdo it. You don't. Because the, the, the parliament to have their own power. The judiciary have their power. The fourth estate of the realm, that is the media, they also have their power. But see, everybody is going to show metal. Where are we going to end? It is the, part, the, the country that will suffer. If today we got up and the media decides that they will be bashing everybody, of which they have, they, they have the power, what will happen? What will happen? I'm, I'm, I'm asking you. So the president should, de should, he should desist, not parliament, he should desist from this kind of actions. He should. Now, if the president, in his own wisdom, believes that there are actions in court and for which he is awaiting the Supreme Court to make such decisions, and that you shouldn't bring a bill that has been fully approved to me yet. Granted that there is, an, there is a stint of ignorance. Granted, do you get it? That granted that there's a stint of ignorance, they have brought it. You being the president, you being the leader of the country, you shouldn't write such a letter. You should just bring the attention to it. That I wish to bring your attention to the fact that whatever you have sent to my table is in court. And as far as legal processes are concerned, I deem it fit that we wait till the court decides on the matter. This is simple language. But you don't talk about this. this you, you see, it's as if the president is afraid of the bill. It's as if, you see, when we're kids, those, uh, the mass, yeah, kaka moto, when you see them, you dug under the bed. That is what he's doing. He's, he hears about this thing and he's digging under the bed. He's hiding, he's running away. You see, Roland, let me say something here. From today, Ghanaians, we should make up our mind. And let everybody who wants to become president know that they should start being prudent. At a certain point, we should end our borrowing from the international community, which encumbers us not to live our own lives, not to adhere to our family values, not to adhere to the way we live in this country. We have, we have values. We have traditions. We have norms. We have our religion. I think we should stop borrowing. And be prudent because you see, we are even richer than those countries. 
in terms of resources and assets. But we are always borrowing from them because we have not been prudent, we have not been disciplined. All this thing that is going on is surrounded by IMF. In the middle of the cake is IMF money that is coming because the, the, the international community are not in favor of what is in the law. But this is our life. Do you get me? This is our life. So I think from going forward, we should, before we vote you into power, we should put down, you see, Ghanaian saying, we should start being involved in the politics of who becomes our president. We should not sit on the fence and wait and vote for them on 7 December, and at the end of the day, when we give them the power, they decide to do what they want to do. No. I think that we should all come together and sign a pact as private citizens and let our leaders sign a pact that when you take position, you are not going to borrow. You are going to be prudent. You are going Mayor, to... even, even as a, a corporate entity, as an individual, sometimes you live... And because with... you are not prudent. <laughs> me, I've never borrowed from anybody because I'm prudent. My father taught me that I should live within my means. Mm -hmm. He taught me two words. He said want and need. If something, you want something, it is not necessary. It is what you need that is necessary. But we want to build big interchanges. We want to have we free have money. We have... Please, we have money. We have gold. Didn't Anadu say that it is the cash cash for the home day? Why is he now borrowing if he was sitting on Sika? Why are we now borrowing? Why are we now borrowing? I'm serious because it is, you see, the fulcrum of all these arguments and, and his re reluctance to sign. I do not think that Anadu is for LGBT. I'll be very No, blunt. he has stated his position. He's not. Yes, I'm saying he's not for it. But I do believe that because of what he has to get, because the country is broke, he has to get uh, some help from the international community, and they are holding him to it. So I think it is time for us to decide that we are doing our own thing. It is time for us to decide that we are being prudent. If something we, are, we want to do something and it is a want, you don't do it. It is a need, we do it. We have to cut down on expenditure. We have to make sure that we don't have a deficit in our budget. All those things must be looked at because that is the reason why we are incumbent. And look at us fighting amongst ourselves. It is not right. And I don't even understand why the majority leader too has waded into the thing. We shouldn't even bring that. We need to end it. We need to stop All he's saying is that the wedding of the speaker... No, what what about the, the wedding, wedding of the, the president's letter? letter? That's how it started. Who started it? How do we find a truth, Ellen, to this? Well, we well, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually in a bit of a... Uh, Chicken I really and egg situation. I don't understand what is going on. So what exactly is the problem of the speaker uh, and, and, and the opposition or the minority, if I may ask? Their problem is that they don't like the wording of the letter that um, as a, uh, the secretary to the yeah. president wrote. And then the directive. So they felt that the wording of the letter is wrong. And so he's saying that they don't have a problem with him saying that the issues are in court, so we should wait. That is not the point of contention. They have a problem with him saying that they shouldn't transmit the bill to him. And they don't have a, they have a problem with... with the wedding and how he put it. Yes. Okay. So if, if you have a problem with how he put it, and you do not have a problem with how speaker also put it, then it means we are, we are, we, we, we are standing nowhere. I mean, so when you go through what the minority, the majority leader, the letter that he wrote, mm. the majority has written, they said yesterday they had a few things to do in Parliament. Okay. It's not just the approval of the ministerial nominees. That was even the last on the, on the bill. They had tax waivers to look at. Mm. They had the laying of the papers. They have consideration of other bills. They have, they said, outstanding IDA facility. And then the approval of ministerial nominees. Mm. So the speaker, by his action, if um, Antin and I are and everybody is saying that the president is troublesome and everything, then I also put it to all of us that the speaker is also very troublesome. In fact, he's three times as troublesome as the president. Why? You have, <laughs> other, <laughs> things, <laughs> you have other things to do in parliament. But yesterday, you just closed the business of the day just because you are annoyed with a certain letter that the president has written. Why do you had one, two, three, four... Other business of the day it means yesterday they couldn't do any one of these. And remember that they are, they, I think they, are, they have risen for the Easter break. Or I don't know if are going, we, to. Are, are going to. So we have these things for the day that had to be done. 
the only issue you had was with the approval of ministerial nominees, which was number five. So what happened to one, two, three, and four? So both, if they think, I don't think that the president is troublesome, honestly. And I honestly do not see what the hula baloo is about the letter. You might not agree with what he has said. Uh, the wording of the letter, okay, but does it go against the constitution, what he said, that because something is in court, you should wait? I don't think it goes well, against speak, the constitution. If you speak to the lawyers, they say that for the constitution, it has the spirit, well, in, the, it, it, it? It has the spirit in the letter. Uh -huh. So the spirit in the letter are more in the so discretionary has, no, somebody decisions has gone, that empowers Somebody that has gone to the Supreme Court. And remember, the Supreme Court is the place where all constitutional matters originate from. So whoever it is, uh, two, uh, there were two suits, they all went to the Supreme Court. That the president should not sign this until they hear their case. And the president says, okay, I'm going to wait for them. What exactly is wrong with that? So that the, we have gone beyond the main issue, and we are looking at tangentials. And the tangentials are that I don't like how you wrote and you gave an order. And therefore, because of that, Speaker could easily have also said that, well, there's a, there's a case against the ministerial nominees. Therefore, they would have to wait till that case is also settled. He didn't have to go on the tangent that he also went to, attacking the president, telling him that he doesn't respect, he doesn't respect uh, uh, what he's undermining democracy. He's doing all the things that he did. That is all. He had four other, five other things to do. So because you are, you are, you are, you are pissed off, you are, you, are, you, you are angry with the president for a letter, the tax waivers were not done, the laying of the papers were not done, the cons consideration of other bills were not done. Nothing was done. We have gotten up. I'm also angry. So it means speaker, if the speaker thinks that the president is showing power, he's showing that he's, he, he, he's, he's president, therefore he's giving orders. His speaker too is showing that he's speaker of parliament, therefore he will not also allow the work of the of, of, of parliament to go on. It's as simple as that. I'm just trying to say that if we think that the president is troublesome, the speaker is super troublesome. The fact that you think that somebody has aired doesn't mean that you should also aired. So the rising up that he did, what happens to the other things? Or today they'll continue? Yes. They'll go, they'll go back to it and go. Well, are they so raising for the Easter? I think they're mm. raising for the Easter. Mm. Okay. So you've, everybody's time yesterday, the whole country's time was wasted. Just because you are not happy with something that Please put, put, put those um, items on, on the other paper that were supposed to have been done. Are you saying that the precedent for which you look at the tone of the letter that had circulated in the media, widely discussed, and civil society governance experts that raised concerns that it, it, that dictation to parliament, mm -hmm. the legislature, is setting a bad precedent. Mm -hmm. You are saying that, 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 that these are more important than the concerns they are raising. Because that, that, means that, that means that... Parliament, in its wisdom, decided that they were going to discuss this. I'm, I'm not the one who determined for them what they would discuss. Yes. So on yesterday, the order paper, yes. on the other paper, they decided they were going to talk about it, including approval of ministerial nominees. And then there's a letter that says that, or oh, there's a court injunction or whatever, a court action against the approval of those ministerial nominees. Fair enough. My issue here is everybody is up in arms against the president for the tone of his letter. And that's what I'm saying. And the directive. The first question I asked was, is there something, did, did, did the letter breach any constitutional rule or any rules? It did not. So somebody can talk to you in a tone you do not like. That's one I agree with. You have a right to stand against it. But that does not mean that you take your anger, and that's what I'm trying to say. So if the president is temperamental, you know, hard, being like Antonin Naya said, he's troublesome. Speaker, uh, speaker Babin is more troublesome than the president because you had other things to do yesterday. So you could easily have said that we are not talking about the approval of the ministers. Uh, there's a court injunction. We are going, yes, other things. Yesterday, you, did, you guys did nothing. Yesterday, Parliament actually wasted our time and our money because we paid them to do some work. You, you are not happy with the president. You are not happy with how he but speaks. It, I totally yeah, understand. Very late, so yes, but they, 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 could, they couldn't work on all this because he said, we, you're, 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 The time started with the president. So, it well, the president, the, the, president is the, the president is an, uh, he's the executive. He's the president of Ghana. He has written you a letter last week. You decided. And remember, the speaker was also out of the jurisdiction I hear. The well, speaker even said formally the letter hasn't gotten to him, but he will respond anyway. So you stop your work for the day, 
-hmm. what you're supposed to do for the day because of one letter that you think the president had written. Okay. So you stop it. So if you're saying, and that's why I want us to reach there, mm -hmm. that the president had not, with that letter that uh, Mr. Santibedi told the secretary to the president wrote, it's not against any rule. He hasn't breached any constitutional way. If you are not happy with it, that's why the Supreme Court is there. Go and, 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 and activate it. That Mr. Santipe Dieto is stepping over his bounds. Or the president, through him, is stepping over his bounds. So you you're saying that everything should go to the Supreme Court? No, why not? But um, they are taking the Shouldn't the president of, mm -hmm. be acting the president do right this? in the that's why I have a problem. No, no, that's why I have a problem. The executive why, do head you think, of, why do you think that the president is not acting right? Because he shouldn't be directing to why parliament what they be? should so do. If you Think that he shouldn't direct parliament as parliament think he shouldn't parliament should state it through the speaker as he did but the rest of the business of the day we pay you to do it so do it but you also don't get up in the tiff and go up so if the president is troublesome the speaker is extra troublesome it's as simple as that because you could you could the president hasn't hasn't We're stopped the president, the president hasn't president stopped doing his job done. the president has not gotten angry and closed uh he what did. we call it uh the, no the president has not closed jubilee house that because of something that somebody has said or a letter that somebody has said i am angry all of you get that right. but the speaker did professor professor i i answered uncle we're here because the president made a comment an official public comment in an official capacity in an official gathering about a case before the court, the Supreme Court, concerning this bill. And as a result of that, if it should come to his table, he was going to hold on assenting to it. Indeed, the first criticism of the president's speech of that was that even that case was not formally before the court. The so, Richard Sky case. Yes, the Richard Sky case. Was not even formally before the courts. That is correct. When, when, when he made that first, first statement. That that's a, the, that's the first criticism against the president. Yes. So then how did he get prior notice that this thing then is Then secondly, he up? goes to write this. So even though he may be <laughs> not stepping on any um, law as far as this, or infringing on any law, breaching any law within the Constitution, there are formalities for which Article 1067 does indicate mm -hmm. Parliament should go through mm -hmm. after approving its own bill mm -hmm. to get to you to accent. Right. So the consideration is just accept it and you do as you please. That is, is it a wrong argument? It is a good argument because the issue is that he needs to accept the transmission. That is the issue of this letter, and that is where the That's why we are, is where we are today. That is why we are here where we are today. It's not even about assenting or refusing to assent to the bill. It's that he's refusing the transmission. When you read the letter from his executive secretary, it's a cease and desist letter. When somebody sends you a cease and desist letter, one is a threat. The executive and the legislative branch are co-equal branches of, the, of Ghana. The president or the executive is not above the legislature. So he cannot write a threatening letter to the legislature. It's, it's unconscionable. You know, in any case, where is um, Alaji Baumia on this? Where is he? Isn't he the one who wants to be our president? What does he say? What is he saying? Is he aware that, is he still in Ghana? Is he aware that this matter is happening? The president and his executive secretary, or through his executive secretary, are clearly being unconstitutional. Even the constitution tells us that after the, even if the president um, assents to the bill, or refuses to assent to the bill, there is also Article 2.1 that says that this thing can go to the, allow the Supreme Court to even scrutinize that bill for its unconstitutionality if there is if it's unconstitutional. So even in the um, Constitution itself, it allows that, for instance, that we have passed a bill. The bill is unconstitutional. It allows Supreme Court to look at the bill, review it, and say, no, we don't accept this bill because it's unconstitutional. It's all in the Constitution. So what is the a president up to? 
refusing the transmission. I am agreeing with my sister. Well, he the president like, may not be up to anything. He's just uh, going He sounds according. like he's up to something. He's too troublesome. I mean, I'm totally agreeing with my sister. He's super troublesome and always looking for a fight. In medicine, we call it the Napoleonic syndrome. What syndrome? The Napoleonic syndrome. He always has to make a point. He always has to be the loudest person in the room. He always has to have the one with the, uh, the more um, pomp and circumstance. Everything he does, he has to do it extra. He's not above the legislature. He's not above the Speaker of Parliament. If he had any issues, he, he needs to, one, He's accept the yeah, transmission. They are not the same. He needs to accept the transmission by the pair, the constitution. He's he bound the the by the constitution the to accept the, the transmission. Of parliament is the speaker of parliament. They are he not the is same. bound by the constitution. We are all being, we all being. We all have their roles to play. Is, so we all have our roles to play in the constitution. The president is not above the constitution of Ghana. He has a Napoleonic syndrome. He always has to be the peacock in the room. He always has to be the loudest. He always has to fight the hardest. Remember his last state of the nation address. He was talking about you know i don't drink and you know as an 80 year old man sometimes he goes too far and sometimes it's embarrassing for the country it's embarrassing for those of us young politicians who want to come into the political fray because when we see our elders misbehaving and talking like the president you know making little dick dicks at his opponent, he has never even had an opportunity where he would stand down and say no. Well, the I won't go the, that far. The president far. was a practicing politician first before he became president. Yeah, but he's embarrassing us now. He's embarrassing the country. These are some of the things he does that puts us where we are today. These are some of the things he does that is making uh, what it's it's a, it's an affront to our constitution. Where is Alaji Baumia? Is he in this why, country? Why do you need because him? Because I want to know what he thinks. His name three times because already. he is in the same um, uh, government. How does it matter? He's the one who wants to t wants to be our president in the next seven months. What does he say to this? What is his stand on the LGBTQI plus? The Where is he? Is he around? The vice He's the vice president. He has a say. He sits in cabinet. Where is he? So this president this is an embarrassment <laughs> to the country. He always wants to be the one. I said he has a Napoleonic syndrome. But you knew the president before he became him. president, right? He was always um, a firebrand. I mean, to be Being fair. a firebrand doesn't mean you have to disrespect your co-equal arm of the government. Being a firebrand doesn't mean you always have to disrespect your opponent. Being a firebrand doesn't mean you always have to put people down. Being a firebrand at 80 years old doesn't mean you have to disrespect the country. That is what the president does repeatedly. Every single time he has an opportunity, he never takes a high road. He always goes for the low road every single time. And that is what is embarrassing to this country. If he wants money from the IMF, do you know that um, Uganda and Zambia, they all have even worse law, I mean, more stringent laws on this LGBTIQ issue, but they are still doing business with IMF. Is he a Ghanaian or he wants to impose other people's law on Ghana? This is a bipartisan law that has been passed by consensus. It has been scrutinized. The people, uh, the Ghanaian sent our um, parliamentarians to parliament to do this for us, to, to work on our behalf. They have met in a bipartisan, even his own party. His own majority leader did not object to it. So what is his problem? He needs to be really respect the rest of us. Uh, how do we it's bring a truth to this? The speaker clearly is having a standoff with the president of the land. And, the, and, and the, of course, um, we always recognize that if you look at the three arms of government, oh. they are independent all the same. But at the end of the day, you look at how our constitution is structured. Uh, even the budget have to be approved uh, or decided by the executive before it comes to the legislature for approval, etc. So how, how do we you bring see, a you truth? See, Roland, the issue of respect is very key in... Why? I keep asking. Please let me finish. In deliberating issues mm. and the tolerance, we need to also be tolerant of our opponents. Can the president write such a letter to the judiciary? Well, I want to find out. Can he write such a letter that there is a case that is going on and the judiciary should desist and seize? Mm -hmm. Can he do that? Because he respects the um, 
independence of the judiciary. The constitution is very clear, separation of powers. Separation means separate. You do your work, I do my work, but we all converge at a point. The president cannot write to the judiciary. The president cannot also write to the legislature in that manner. You see, the fact that the leader of the legislature is of the opposition party does not mean that the president should always do politics when it comes to issues with the parliament. Do you the president should understand that it might be unfortunate to him, mm -hmm. but the leader of the second arm mm. is an opposition person. And for me, I think that we should have even celebrated it. That parliament has been able to work with the executive, with the judiciary, with the media and all other institutions even though the leader of that house is from the opposition party. Mm -hmm. And I think that's far. Um, right Honorable Speaker, let's be very unfair to him, has done well in that regard. That even sometimes his people think that he is too fair and too transparent. Abang Bagwin, the Speaker. Yes, yeah, yeah, the Speaker. He has been able to walk a very fine line of neutrality. So I do not think that he deserves to be treated like that. And um, Roland, my dear, respect is very key in all our deliberations. If you start disrespecting me, there's a tendency that I will disrespect you. And maybe this is not the first time, even during the sauna, mm -hmm. the president's body language wasn't who he is. Sometimes when he comes into Someone a- Someone does it matter? No, it doesn't matter because people are watching you. Body language speaks a lot. Body language is more versatile than even spoken language because it exhibits what is going on in your, in your being. It tells the people around you that you are angry. You might be smiling, but your body language is telling us that you are angry. So I think that it is time at this moment, nine months to the extinction of the MPP, the president should do well to leave a certain kind of legacy. You do not need this fight. We do not need this um, vituperation between the number one and number two arms of our governance. Our democracy should work. Our democracy should be transparent. There should be a lot of decency around our democracy. I don't know why this bill is creating so many problems. As Prof said, Three years old. As Amma said, this bill is a bill that, I mean, why should we spend so much time on it? I don't know why he, the, the, the president is afraid. Why is the president? He's not afraid. He's only going up. No, no, but he's running away from it. You, you read it, 1067. What does it say? It says that, I mean, when it comes, it gives you time to say whatever you want to say. I, read, I wrote a memo, I mean, as I was speaking, I, there was, you can write something to Parliament in a nice manner, in a manner of comradeship. Because you yourself, you don't believe in that, unless he believes in it and we don't know, but I believe he does not. So why is he doing this? Because, you see, the Arab world, hmm. they have one of some of the stringent um, laws. They have the most. The most. <laughs> the exception of Dubai. That is a bit... Uh, Dubai, the other side. Uh, and even yeah, that one. Even that one. Mm. Do, do you get me? So, but the West, they do business with the Arab world. A lot. A lot. They are not, they are, they are not uh, uh, they having problems. A lot of oil. Yeah, but we also have things. We should look after our things properly so that at the end of the day, they will be respected. If we just give everything to them the way they want it, on a silver platter, they will not respect us. Mm. Don't we have oil? We, we have, have gold. We have yeah, some oil. We've ordered some oil. We have gold. We have oil. We have uh, uh, bosks. We have everything. Iron. Now Iron, oil, we have lithium. Mm -hmm. It is the way we, 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 we deal with our resources. What we have, the Arab world, most of the countries don't have what we have. It is the way we deal with it. That is why the West can tell us what to do. But on this one, we are saying no. The president being our leader should come with us. And say no. 
You see, the leader should tell the people that, well, no, give me the money I need, but still I am telling you no. Because we even deserve reparation huh? as Africans. Yes. For the slave trade? Yeah, for, for everything. But apart from, for everything. We deserve reparation. So if we want something from the West, we are also part of it. Are we not a member of the IMF? Are we not a member of the World Bank? Don't we pay our dues? So at the time that let's say that we are in distress and we need your help, you do not do this to us. You don't tie a, a, a rope around our neck and pull it slowly because you want something to be done. In America that we are talking about, the, the presidents of America, do they have children who are gay? When they are celebrating the weddings of their children, the West, the, the, um, um, the royal family, do you find any gay person in there? They want, yes, they want marriage to go for procreation to go on. Even they have specificity. You should give birth to a boy. Yes, it is recently that after Queen Elizabeth that they are a bit. You should give birth to a boy. Numbers, a three. And, and, and they are trying to say that we should accept this. That is not our culture. We are not against them. You see, I haven't even read the law to the today. I saw experts of it. You see, the portion that they are even talking about, deal 10, 4 to 5, it is about doing it publicly. It is not a, So if you are in your room and you are doing this, who, who cares about what you do in your room? But don't come out and do it. So what, what is it? Roland, please, I beg you, why this hula baloo and this fight? What is it? <laughs> no, I just want to fight. Why are we fighting? We are not we're, fighting. We are not, over. Fi we are not fighting. Why, why? But we are not fighting over it's, kinky it, that is It's fighting. just a standoff. We are not fighting over fish, fish yeah. small fish that is uh, 20 cities. Mm -hmm. We are not fighting over the fuel that we are buying at almost 60 cities. We are not fighting about emissions uh, uh, tax. We are not fighting about pollution and sanitation tax. We are not fighting about our CD to dollar, which is now almost 14 cities. We are fighting about LGBTQ mm -hmm. bill. Why? I think the two gentlemen should come to a truth and agree that they are not going to fight again. The president should take the lead. He is the elder. He is the leader. All right. um, Ellen, now, now that we've agreed that they all... I haven't agreed. I haven't said what I want to say. Okay, please say. Article 57.1 mm -hmm. of our constitution says there shall be a president of the Republic of Ghana who shall be the head of state and head of government and commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ghana. The president, that's two, shall take precedence over all other persons in Ghana and in descending order, the vice president, the speaker of parliament, and the chief justice shall take precedence over all other persons in Ghana. What's Why am I reading it? it? Why am I reading it? <laughs> the president and the speaker of parliament are not the same. In professor's submission, she kept on saying that they are the same. They are not the same. As in human Parli beings. No, by office. That's why I just read the constitution. He said the president is the first gentleman of the land. He comes first, <laughs> followed by the, uh, the, the vice president, then the speaker of parliament, and the chief justice. These four shall take precedence over all other persons in Ghana. So they are not the same. You see this thing that the NDC is trying to say, and, and you see it's from, not just from her, from all of them, that the president and the, 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 the speaker of parliament are co-equals. They are not co-equals. The one is a president, the, the, the one is a president, one is, they are not even the executive and the legislature are not co-equals. One is president, one, they are not. One is president, one is the, the, the speaker of parliament. I just want that to be clear. And then if you go on, and you keep on attacking the president for writing a letter that is not unconstitutional. The letter we have read, it does not undermine anybody. All he's saying is that don't bring, don't bring a, 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 what, a, a bill yet yeah. because things are in, in court. And we are Ellen, attacking. No, we are attacking. I'm not talking about the president but to be directing no, the no, the, 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 the constitution. No, the, con the constitution gives the president the opportunity to also write what he thinks he should write. You might not agree with him. I, that is no problem. But that doesn't mean that he's disrespecting anybody. We were talking about when Mr. Sky sent the case to court and uh, the fact that the president spoke about it when it hadn't even reached um, what the court. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. You mentioned something, that the president spoke about it publicly when the guy hadn't even been to court. 
My issue then, the question I ask it, at the time that Mr. Sky was sending the, the whole thing to court, had the bill even been left uh, Parliament? It no, hadn't it left. Hadn't. No. They are just, they are just, it's the, just this the week. Voting that, yes, it's just this week that the bill had they have finished whatever processes they have to go through and it is leaving. But even at that time, all of us sat here and spoke uh, against or uh, spoke against the president as if the bill was already on his table and he had refused to sign it. And he said it hasn't come yet. I hear people are taking it to court. Let's see how it will end. I honestly do not see that there's any fight between the president and the speaker of parliament. Everybody is saying what they think they should say. My issue is that the fact that you are pissed off with somebody, the fact that somebody said something that you are not happy with, does not mean that your whole business of the day, you stop doing it. And that is why I'm calling out the speaker of, uh, of parliament for doing that. Yesterday, he practically, nothing was done I in parliament. Very late. Th nothing what was done in do? parliament, according to the majority, nothing yeah, was done in parliament. They out. didn't do anything. So the majority leader is saying that these were outstanding. Outstanding. Is that they had to deal with, but they did something. The one he took, yeah, some, he took an issue against was the least of it. Look, we I would agree totally with what the the majority is saying, especially under the point twelve, that the NDC and we don't we don't have to change the fact that the Speaker of Parliament is an NDC member. He's an NDC person, and of course we have elections in the next seven months. I see this thing that Alaji Baumia, the last time I checked, Alaji Baumia is vice president. He is not president. Alaji Baumia is called Alaji but Mahamudu. He's, the sec he's, the he's, second he's called Muhammad. Alaji Mahamud Mahamudu Baumia. The president is called His Excellency. <laughs> Nana Adodanko <laughs> Ekufuadu. <laughs> Ghanaians voted for Nana Adodanko Ekufuadu to take certain decisions. We did not vote for Alaji Baumia. We are yet going to vote for him, and we are going to vote for him until we vote for him to be president of Ghana, when there's a certain president who by his God's grace is not dead and he's taking his decisions, you do not come and ask us that where is Elijah Baumia, when his boss is there and his boss is working. Is he a member I of mean, unfortunately, Elijah Baumia, Elijah Baumia is the sort of person who does not undermine his leaders. Oh. He has oh. over the years oh. learned how to deal with people, how to work with people oh. without undermining oh. them. I'm talking about Alaji Baumia. And that is why Alaji Baumia is vice president and he is behaving as vice president. He will continue to behave as vice president so until he is done. We are nobody in, an we are issue, in an issue that is related to his direct like boss. Mm -hmm. And his direct boss is the president of Ghana. And his direct boss is dealing with it. You do not come and sit here and ask us where is Alaji Baumia in this. Alaji where Baumia is, is the vice president. He is doing his job as the vice president. And when Ghanaians vote for him and he becomes president, then you can ask those questions. <laughs> Until then, <laughs> Nana Dodanko Ekufuadu, fortunately, is the president I mean, of Ghana. Until the then, there... Alaji Baumia, as I said, and I repeat, he does not undermine his but leaders. He does not yeah. undermine. Yeah. He does yeah. not, so what? He's, he's not number one. He's more he important he, the, than last time, the last time yeah. I checked, number one has Correct. not gone anywhere. Yeah. Number one is we need yes. a we need a, we Number need a one is on still table. alive. Yes. All right. Number one is still president of Ghana, and mm. he's doing his job. You do not call number two to come and overtake number one. As I said, in the NPP and with Alaji Baumia, we do not undermine our leaders. We work with our what leaders. What is undermining on this one? Yes. It, yes. It, it, it is right. Alaji Baumia so, so who let's, himself let's, who said yeah. that his, his leaders didn't do a good job, so now he's he said the that one who's coming to do the good he job, right? Way. Remember his speech that he gave he about never said that. his new right. speech and that's that, that okay, he okay. gave? So he's been doing that. He has not undermined the past. He has not undermined his president.